Hi guys, I'm Josh and welcome to my DIY channel video Epo. I'm going to show you how to make this really cute and small little puppy lamp. I'm going to call it a light lamp for its form factor as well as the kind of light output it has. I must admit that the design of the lamp is not mine. It's inspired by some of the lamp ideas which I came across online. This could be made bigger and can be used as a table lamp as well. I'm going to make this out of the wood that I salvaged from the pallets but you can make it out of a wide range of materials from foam boards to cartons to cardboards, barbecue skews or even popsicle sticks. Of course the method of glue up and putting it together will be a bit different and I'm sure you can figure that out yourself. If you have not subscribed to my channel already please do so and don't forget to click on the bell icon so that you can get notifications on whenever I upload new videos. Now whenever I say this it puts off a lot of people but I'm trying to do something interesting over here. Don't you think I deserve your support and appreciation? So go ahead and click on the subscribe icon. To begin with I measured the broadest piece of pallet wood I could find. Based on its size I began making the sketch. First, I sketched out the design of the lamp. Once happy, I made a fair copy with accurate measurements. School geometry does help a lot. The pallet wood was very thick and I need a thinner strip of wood for this make. It is quite possible to do that with a saw, but it was time for me to try out my new table saw. This is the first time I'm using a table saw and this is definitely not the appropriate way to do it. I cut a lot of thin pieces, more than what I needed. And that is because pallet wood sometimes is not very reliable. As a structure, the pallet is strong, but as individual pieces, it is not strong enough. The selected pieces were sanded lightly before proceeding with the next step. Next, all of these pieces were sorted and labeled as to what part of the lamp they are to become. For the head of the puppy, there are four pieces that form its sides. All of these pieces are taped together and I took it to the miter saw. After making the straight cuts, I drew the slanting lines which would make the shape look like a trapezium. Geometry again. Then the desired angle was adjusted on the miter saw. I placed the stopper and I ran the miter saw. And the workpiece kicked back. This is the part where I jump into the frame and I have to give you out this big disclaimer that I'm not a professional. I'm still learning how to use the power tools that I'm using in my videos. I hope to learn how to use these things without losing my fingers. Now after whatever happened, I still need to cut all these parts. So I thought of making a temporary jigsaw table. Let's see how that works. Hope it is not a disaster. You can see that this jigsaw has got two holes in the bottom base plate. What I'm going to do now is to drill two more holes in the bottom base plate and then fix the jigsaw from beneath the workbench so that the uh, blade it sticks out of the table and I'm going to bolt uh, the jigsaw using these holes. After drilling on the base plate of the jigsaw, I marked and drilled a hole on the workbench. The jigsaw was placed under the table upside down with the blade popping out of the hole that I had just made. It was bolted securely with the holes we made on the base plate. The trigger was pressed using a zip tie. This is not a permanent setup but I think I need to make one for future. I drew all the parts of the lamp on a separate sheet of paper. Using a craft knife, all of these pieces were cut out. This is how it looks like when all of the paper parts are put together. Surprisingly, I didn't have to make any corrections. Using these chart paper stencils, I transferred all of the shape onto the wood pieces. Next, I fired up the jigsaw and started cutting all of the pieces. Then I sanded all of the pieces to their accurate dimensions. After this, the places where the holes have to be drilled were marked. Stacking the symmetrical parts together, I took them to the drill press and made holes. Alright guys, let me show you the top view as to what I've made so far. The first layer will be the layer that makes the legs. So the, the front legs and the hind legs followed by the layer that makes the, the part of, main part of the body. Followed by the connector that connects the neck to the body and the tail. And these both are the same layer. And again, reverse the layers, we again have the body and then the two legs. The one part that I did not show how to make is this small little thing that is uh, going to be a connector that is going to join the neck part as well as the head. Now this is I took a small block of wood, drilled a hole in the center and removed this portion off and then the hole is drilled sideways. So because of this I get a movement which I can use to tilt the head. Now the next part is to make the head which is a little tricky and all you have to do is put the ears and the structure of the lamp will be ready. For the head of the puppy, the pieces were placed and marked to compensate for its thickness. The hole for the ear of the puppy will be just beneath the top piece. Then using super glue, all of these parts were glued together. 
The super glue is only a temporary fix. I made 1 mm pin holes and drove some pin nails. The back part doesn't seem to be a proper square. The best way to deal with this situation is to trace the shape of the back piece and then cut it out. I've cut out a piece that is going to cover the back portion of the head part and I just realized but before fixing onto this we'll have to fix the bulb holder on, the, on top of this because once I fix everything in there it will be really difficult for me to get the bulb holder and screw it uh, in its place. So what I'm going to do now is to fix the bulb holder as well as drill a small hole from which the wire is going to come out and I'm going to make a mark based on that. Once the bulb holder was fixed, I did a quick check and the light works fine. I've covered about these bulbs and holders in the steampunk clamp video. I then repeated the process of making pilot holes and driving a few pin nails to secure the back piece as well. Once it was done, I took all of the pieces to the bench sander and I beveled out the edges of all the parts. Putting all of the pieces together is a real fun. While everything was going on as per plan, disaster strikes. The fridge bulb I used, although it is rated as 220 volts, the heat buildup caused it to fuse in just about 2 or 3 minutes. It was an inexpensive bulb, just about 15 rupees. I thought it was the fault of the bulb and I tried it thrice. The bulb fused every time. There is a way to fix it, but the cost of the project would go high. So I swapped the bulb with LED fridge bulb. The effect is not as great as the incandescent light bulb, but I had to save the project somehow. I tried to cover the bolts with wooden plugs but I failed there too. I simply trimmed the bolts that were sticking out of the lamp and let it be. Here comes my favorite part, oiling the wood. This is my favorite finish. I gave the lamp a couple of coats of boiled vegetable oil, at least that's what I had with me. The wire that came with the holder was looking really ugly. So I added a better power cord, made sure it is insulated with heat shrink tubing and secured it with insulation tape. Our lamp is ready. Guys, I hope you like this little lamp I made. You know that I've used pallet wood to make these lamps and in my part of the world, pallet wood is used as firewood or sometimes they are used in front of the shops to avoid vehicles being parked in front of them. I've managed to salvage a few pallets and I'm trying to make something interesting out of them. With respect to this particular video, if you're looking at warm light for the lamp, I would recommend you to use warm LED lights and not incandescent bulbs because incandescent bulbs, they throw in a lot of heat and because the lamp is made out of wood, there is a chance that it might go up in flames. I'm sure you don't want that to happen. I want you there. Alright? I hope you like this video. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel Video Epo. I'll be back with another interesting video very soon. Until then, bye. I think I seriously need to change the script for my sign off because I think I've said I'll be back more than Arnold in all of his Terminator movies. I need to change the script.